Hello everyone! Patch 11.0 is technically here. We are now in the War Within pre-patch. So, I wanted to do a quick guide. In fact, I didn't actually want to. Somebody in Discord asked me to, so I did it. Does that mean then that if you do want these kind of guides made, do pop into the Discord and do ask, because if you do ask, you do get. Um, I'm going to be running through these really, really quickly. Obviously, we are not 71 or 80 yet, and therefore we can not actually unlock our hero talents. So we are in a really, really weird phase where, the, you know, the whole build has changed, but we're still kind of stuck in the old era of Dragonflight. So I just want to go through kind of what the talent builds are looking like for uh, raiding and Mythic Plus, and really what the rotation is going to look like in this short period of time that we are still having fun in Dragonflight before the War Within comes. I do want to say I will be there with all my guides coming out the second that the War Within launches. So do hold on tight. They will be coming, you know, always straight away for you, um, including PvE and PvP for all classes. So I am working on it, but I just want to get these out quickly, just kind of, kind of give you a bit of understanding of what the hell we are doing now, because I had a lot of questions about how to play Arcane Mage, and I feel really bad for people because it's completely changed, and some people don't realise that. So, without any more yapping and waffling, let's actually get into what we are now doing in Arcane Mage for the War Within pre-patch. So Arcane Mage is notoriously very, very difficult. And if you have been watching my previous guide videos on it, you'll know that the rotation is insane. Well, it has had a complete rework, meaning then the talents, the build, everything. It's all completely new. We have lost our Temporal Warp talent, which is where we can double Bloodlust as a mage. It's a hell of a lot bursty as well. And there's a hell of a lot um, less management around our mana needed anymore as well. So for both builds in Mythic Plus and Raiding, it's really, really similar. I'm showing this right now. This is the Mythic Plus build that you would go with for pre-patch. And if we swap to raiding in single target, you can see here the only talent we're changing is this one here in the actual arcane build. There's a few utilities um, like remove curse, etc. that we will be going for in Mythic Plus and more AOE. But overall, it's really not changing much. The only one we're actually getting is that we reduce arcane blasts mana cost by 3% and increase its damage by 3% in single targets. The only thing we're really changing over for single target versus AoE and Mythic Plus. So how are we actually going to use it in a rotation in the pre-patch? Well, you'll be very happy to know, or maybe sad to know, let me know in the comments, um, that it is completely, it's a lot... Oh, no, let's go back to Mythic Plus because I had it all set up in my action bars. Um, it's a lot simpler now, a lot, lot simpler. This is pretty much it now. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy, actually, how, uh, how simple this is. So first things first, we now don't have to wait, you know, to 18 seconds for our um, cooldowns and things like this. We're just going to go straight into it. You can see here we can't use our arcane missiles right now. And the reason for that is because we can only use it when we're in a clear casting state. Never Precision is consuming clear casting, increases the damage of your next two arcane blasts or arcane barrages by 20%. And you can see here our arcane mass missiles are only available when we have clear casting. Obviously, before we go into combat, um, use your arcane intellect. That will summon your familiar um, along, that actually comes alongside that spell now. And basically, what we're actually doing, we're just going to go straight in and cast Evocation. You can then see I have got clear casting, meaning I can then use my arcane missiles. After that, we're going to go straight in with arcane orb, launching an arcane orb forward from your position, traveling up to 40 yards, dealing X amount of damage to enemies in its path and whoever it passes through. This will grant you an arcane charge when cast and every time it deals damage. After that, we're going to use our arcane surge. And you can see here that is basically decimating our mana. So this is the priority list, by the way. So we can go back up and use our arcane missiles and arcane orb, etc. If you're not sure what arcane surge does, it expends all of our current mana to annihilate our target and nearby enemies for up to X amount of arcane damage based on mana spent. Deals reduced damage beyond five targets, and it does also generate clear casting. For the next 15 seconds, your mana regeneration is increased by 400%, and spell damage is increased by 5%. 
One other thing I should have mentioned with evocation is that it increases your mana regen by 1500% and also grants clear casting. You are guaranteed to get the clear casting effect when using these spells. After that, you are going to click Arcane Barrage, and I'm standing back for a reason. If you see that it takes a while to actually travel to your target and hit them, basically, when you fire it, you want to immediately hit Touch of the Magi, so that Touch of the Magi is going on your target before the Arcane Barrage hits the target. What happens then is Touch of the Magi, or sorry, your Arcane Barrage, will be affected by your Touch of the Magi. This applies Touch of the Magi to your current target, accumulating damage that you deal for 12 seconds on that target, then exploding for that amount to the target and reduce damage to nearby enemies, and that'll also generate four Arcane Charges. You can see here on our Weak Aura, these are our charges here. We've got four of them. After that, on the priority list, we're going to use Arcane Blast, um, which is going to generate, again, more Arcane Charges. We're going to use this to actually consume our Never Precision, which is here. Consuming clear casting increases the damage of your next two arcane blasts or arcane barrages up by 20%. So whenever we consume clear casting, so for instance, let's use evocation, and then let's do our, our arcane missiles, we are using up that clear casting. You can see on the weak aura here we've got two charges of arcane precision. Once we're down here, we can basically use that to absorb one of those charges or consume one of those never precision charges. And that is where we're going to do that in the rotation. I am going to go through this again, just to make sure it fully makes sense. If you're thinking, oh God, it's a bit all over the place, don't worry. After that, we're only going to have one stack of Arcane Precision, because you always get two stacks, right, when you can consume clear casting. Um, like if we use this, we can use Arcane Surge. Boom, we've got clear casting. We use that. You can see two, um, two stacks of it. Arcane Blast, I've now got one stack. I use Arcane Barrage, it consumes the other stack of it. If you then have no stacks of Never Precision, of course, we're going to go back and consume any clear casting stacks um, with Arcane Missiles again. And then lastly, if you do fall below 70% mana after Arcane Surge, you're going to ramp up that mana really quickly after it. I'll show it you again in a minute. Um, then we're just going to use Arcane Barrage. And that is, um, sorry, it's actually on there one too many times. Um, that is basically it for the rotation. So to go through that again, basically... Number one, when you go into combat, use your evocation cooldown. Immediately consume the clear casting you get with it with your arcane missiles. Let's then use arcane orb on cooldown and arcane surge on cooldown. We've got two stacks of never precision. So we are going to use arcane blast and arcane barrage to absorb or consume those stacks of that. Again, we get those from clear casting. And when we use our first arcane barrage, we're going to use touch of the magi. Um, if you feel like you can't, you're not skilled enough to use it before it hits, then just use it and then use Arcane Barrage. It's not the end of the world. It's just a cheeky little way that you can get a bit of extra damage in really quickly. Uh, so again, using Arcane Barrage to use our clear casting stacks, using our Arcane Orb, Arcane Surge on cooldown, and um, Arcane Barrage, using our Arcane Missiles again, using our Arcane Barrage to use the Never Precision. We've got one stack, and therefore we're going to go back to here, and I've got two stacks. And this is kind of how you do the rotation. It kind of works like that. So you basically could just follow it in that order. It's exactly the same in Single Target and Mythic Plus, pretty much, because some of these um, you know, abilities will actually affect multiple enemies anyway, as it is. So you don't have to worry about doing a lot of Single Target versus AoE in this rotation. Uh, it's all pretty much there for you. That is pretty much it. That is a lot more shallow than a lot of my guides usually go into. Um, but I'm just doing these guides for, you know, the pre-patch. It's only going to be out for four weeks until we go on to the full, um, the full kind of, uh, you know, the War Within builds and, and guides. Stat priorities um, and things like that. If you're watching this at this point, you're probably already very aware. You've probably got all your gear already for um, Arcane Mage. You know, we're just waiting to go into the, to the expansion, which is, you know, your gear is all going to change then anyway. So I don't think there's much value in me going into those details now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how we're going to play Arcane Mage in, uh, in the pre-patch for the next few weeks until the War Within launches. Hopefully this guide was useful for you in this short uh, transitionary phase. If you would like to see the class that you may be playing come out sooner um, for the War Within, please do subscribe to Patreon if that is something you are able to do and would like to do. It does really, really support the channel. Releasing all of these class guides with a team behind me now is exceptionally expensive and it takes longer to get the guides out um, 
because of that and uh, you know all the expense so by joining patreon you're not just supporting me you are really truly supporting the channel now as well so it really is appreciated um and as always join the discord if you need any help and you can uh click this playlist here for all of the pre-patch guides that i am doing if you should need them